Hey everybody, welcome in. <laughs> I hope everybody's doing good. Hey everybody, welcome in. And I always check to see if the sound is working. And uh, welcome to September. So we've got a lot of stuff to cover, and thank you all for joining. So let's just go. Uh, I'm almost sitting upright, <laughs> back in the bunker. Anyway, crypto update. We're going to talk about uh, what's basically September has in store for us as well as we go through this. So math, money, freedom. And of course, none of this is investment advice, as you all know. So first of all, hello, September. Welcome in. And this sometimes has historic significance for the crypto market, but let's analyze exactly what it's going to mean for us going forward. So to start off, uh, it started with a bang. <laughs> so for those of you out there, you know exactly what's going on today. We have Ethereum up a whopping $350. We have Bitcoin up over fifteen hundred dollars and everything's up you know eight ten percent all over the place but just looking at the chart here you can see that polka dots on fire we did say for a long time things like chain link and polka dot were going to come and so same with ethereum now they're all catching up uh even avalanche is kind of back v chain is up there as well and it's been quiet for a long time so all goodness everywhere now let's go and see what else is going on. So let's look at, this is kind of one of the craziest things, the Wolf of Wall Streets, or the Wolf of Wall Streets, I should say. The E talked about the fidelity prediction. I touched this upon this last week, but apparently they have an updated model. And here it basically goes all the way out to $100 million by the year 2037, which is kind of stunning. But uh, now they've even raised that up to a billion dollars per Bitcoin by the year 2037. So just put that in perspective. Billion dollars at Bitcoin in 2037, it's hard to believe. But technically, if fiat does what we think it could do, that could be possible. And, you know, we're, we're denominating in dollars, which could go to nothing, as, of course, as well. But still, staggering the potential that's there. And this was also very interesting. Gary Gensler, the head of the SEC, you've seen a lot of his face lately. But uh, this quote from him, uh, published by Bitcoin Magazine, was... I think the transformation we're living through right now could be every bit as big as the internet in the 1990s. And he's not the only one to say this. Uh, he used to be a professor at MIT. He knows his stuff. He knows Bitcoin. But for him to make that contrast is staggering. And I, I truly personally, even though he's going to come down hard on some regulatory issues for some DeFi stuff and crypto, etc., it's good to have a person like that who understands how big this is and how important it is as well to the economy and not to close the doors on innovation and Bitcoin. But let's go a little bit further. This other news uh, could really drive Bitcoin parabolic. This is Jack and Jack, Jack Maulers, Jack Dorsey. Jack Maulers, of course, from Strike and Jack Maulers and <laughs> Jack Dorsey from Twitter. Uh, they basically could bring Bitcoin to the tipping point. So basically, this is bringing... The new, a new lightning service, which will be strike enabled to support Square's forthcoming hardware wallet. Uh, they're going to start with tipping, beta testing tipping right now. And uh, basically, this could absolutely propel uh, the adoption of Bitcoin from 150 million to a billion people in very short order. So, as I always say, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube anymore. If this happens, this could be staggeringly positive for the industry. Now, let's talk about the history as well. You guys remember I did this. I do this now every month. On the 1st of August 2021, I shared this exact chart, except I wasn't able to fill in the last blue box on the right-hand side for the actual August 31st, 2021 performance, and it ended up being 21%. So it's funny because my exact words a month ago was, well, 20 13 and 2021 look a lot like each other and i wouldn't be surprised if we had something around the 20 something percent and it's in a video and it's <laughs> the internet doesn't lie as they say but i thought that was staggering here we have just over 20 percent at 21 percent and now what the question is what does it mean and foretell for september so um, that's a quick look of the 21% return so far in September by the blue box, but we'll, we'll skip that. You guys can trust me there. But the key thing when we look forward to September is we need to take into account some certain factors. First one is 
Will Clemente, he talks about the Bitcoin illiquid supply, RSI. And this is another one of his great charts, but basically the wave of Bitcoin supply shock has the biggest momentum he's ever seen in recent history. And if you look at the RSI tipping point at the top of the purple charts with the green lines, they are the times when the supply shock kicks in. Now, what's interesting about this season is we have two supply shocks in the same season, and that's never happened before. He also spoke about uh, the next on-chain resistance being at about $55,000, and there's blue skies above 60000 So again, more very bullish sentiment for Bitcoin going forward. Willy Wu also pointed to something similar, different flavor of the supply shock, but basically we haven't even gotten into the accumulation peak accumulation phase, as he calls it, for Bitcoin yet. So this is why these little black boxes here, the chart, we haven't even entered that yet. Another way to talk about peak accumulation phase is also what I call FOMO times. So it's like Bitcoin breaks an all-time high, everybody's talking about it and everybody scrambles to buy it. That could happen next, according to Willy Wu. So we'll see. Again, future's bright. Now, historically, Winston who is the bear we adopted, uh, historically owns September. So the bears own September for Bitcoin. But let's look at the price action historically. Again, I pull this up. You can see that 2011 was down 40%. 2012, up about 22%. 2013, down about 3%. 2014, down about 20%. And up incrementally in 2015, 2016, 2017, down 10%, 2018, 9%, 2019, it was about 15%, and 2020, down about 10%. But the good news is, so far this year, we are up 2.5% already, just today. Mind-blowing. Um, and in fact, that was when I put this together. We are now up 3.08%. <laughs> I thought you put this together half an hour ago. It's amazing how fast things change in this space. So historically, you can look at the historical charts, but I think this bull market is very, very different for so many reasons. And you've heard me talking about that, so I'm not even going to bore you to death with that. Now, there is another options expiry, and it's coming up this Friday. So the good news is, last time I did this, I did say we had very bullish signs we'd be at 50,000. We fell shy of the 50,000 last Friday. But here, once again, the bulls are very much in control for $50,000 plus. If you look at the number of calls, it's between 48,000 and 50,000 is about 2,000 calls versus 120 puts, which is extremely bullish. The net result is about $100 million favoring the call bull options. And above 50,000, you have over 3,300 3, call options versus zero puts. So the net result is complete dominance with $165 million worth of bullish sentiment. So again, that's a very positive sign for September for this Friday coming. But let's talk a bit about uh, total market cap dominance. An interesting thing, I started looking at a lot of pairs today. Uh, not the fruit, but how things work in combination with each other and the ratios. Now, I've always been very big on ratios. Here you see the total market cap dominance. And Bitcoin is nearly 2x Ethereum. So basically, Bitcoin dominance is 41% of all crypto market cap. And Ethereum is 20.2%. So basically, when we get to that 2x level, normally it's time for Bitcoin to make a move. That's a good sell signal um, for Bitcoin or for Ethereum to fall because it's gone too high. But I don't see Ethereum falling. I see Bitcoin rising and Ethereum continuing to $4,000. But let's talk about that right now. So here are the historical ETH to Bitcoin pairs. And you can see every time the ratio is 0 0.077. We hit this in May 2018. And again, in May 2021, a few months ago, and it just happened now. So this is a make or break mark when where Bitcoin typically runs to bring it back into sync. And I do see the long term, by the way, you've heard me say this before, but long term, I do see the ratio of Bitcoin to ETH going to 0.1 ETH. So basically, if you have 10 ETH, it should be the equivalent value of one Bitcoin. And um, so mark my words, that's going to happen. And it's already <laughs> quite strong right now. So let's talk about Ethereum for a second. Here, you guys may have seen this already. This is the Ethereum supply on exchanges dwindling. That's the from CryptoQuant, crypto the blue line just going down. 
and it's just getting worse and worse every single day. There's no let up and the supply is <laughs> going down fast. Now, uh, in this article, um, an analyst said there's a ton of metrics that are pointing to an Ethereum 4000. In fact, we were looking at Ethereum 3800 uh, not too long ago. So getting to 4000 isn't a big stretch from here. But some of the key things that are very interesting to take into account is large transaction volumes, which reached 16.2 billion, the highest since June of this year. And the number of addresses holding Ether for over one year is also reaching an all-time high, very similar to Bitcoin, according to in the block, into the block. And uh, since the implementation of EIP 1559, as you know, a ton of Ethereum has been burnt. I think it's now over 550 million has been burnt away out of circulation. And this basically is creating the basis for huge accumulation by investors. But the supply is dwindling and that's just going to jack the price and it could go parabolic pretty soon. So again, I remain uh, very bullish on Ethereum and we have another three months to get to ETH 2.0. So we'll see what happens. Now, in terms of other news, uh, one analyst like my target for Ethereum, not investment advice, is 8,900 for this bull cycle. This analyst said 8,000 is not far-fetched at all and why it's possible. Again, they spoke about the usual factors like the burn and inflation rate, um, et cetera, et cetera. And the amount on the exchanges is drastically dropping and inflation is now less than that of Bitcoin, which is staggering. So that, that is the thesis that they say it could go to 8,000, which is very conservative uh, journalists that put that piece together. Now let's talk about 800 days. And I'm going to leave that here for a second to see if anybody out there knows what this is. Uh, I know there's a few of you that do, but I thought it was interesting because that's from 10,000 days, but we're going to talk about 800 days for a second. Again, another pair that we looked at today, this is the link to, to Ethereum ratio, is at an 800 day low. Even though um, the link had, chain link had a bit of a spike today, it still is at this historic low level. And this is going back 800 days, which is nearly two and a half years. Now, every time this happens, it's only a matter of time before it pumps. Because, you know, I always see Chainlink as one of the safest, lowest risk plays out there. They are the glue that holds all the dApps and all the DeFi together. And uh, the ratio should, on average, be about 0 0.02. So assuming that, I think it's very safe to assume now, considering where Ethereum is, the historic average value of Chainlink should be about $71.68. Now, if Ethereum goes to $8,900, you can do the math of exactly where that'll go, assuming those same ratios. And again, Link is a very, very safe play. There are other protocols building out their own oracles as well, and that could nibble away at the market share, but they have a very, very big moat, which is one of the reasons I really like uh, Chainlink. So let's talk about a little bit of disappointing news and as you know i want to get as many females into crypto as possible um but in a recent survey basically it said women are very underrepresented in crypto and basically of the survey found i think about 16 percent of males are invested in crypto and less than seven percent of female counterparts are invested and um, but what was really uh, sad to note is I had hit a peak of about a 13%, 13.6% female audience, and it's fallen down to 10% again. So I know the channel's growing, but it's not growing with proper ratio. So come on, ladies, jump on and get a piece. This is the most inclusive asset the human race has ever seen, and it can be life-changing for everybody. So don't miss this opportunity. Now, the study was kind of interesting because when they tried to figure out why women don't invest in crypto, um, I'm not sure exactly the response, but basically females tend to be much more conservative with their finances. In some cases, though, they're much more aggressive than males. So it really depends on the personality type. But again, it's an opportunity of a lifetime. Just look at what's happened over the past couple of months or even this year or the last two years. It's incredible. And uh, hopefully we can get my audience. And <laughs> I love the 90% males too, but we're back to 10% female. Hopefully that will pick up a little bit as we go forward too. So uh, a little bit of the job market recovering, uh, which you guys say, why do we care about the job market? This is crypto. No, we do care because uh, 
payroll when they're short, and these were drastically short, they missed the target by over 300,000 jobs. This means the tendency for the federal bank in the US to taper, which means stop printing money, goes down because they need to keep the economy at full employment. So this is actually good news for crypto. And all the jobs that came in were from leisure and hospitality, which are taking a hit right now. And also related to the economy, uh, Delta will strike. We've been expecting this. Uh, stock market beware. This came from Goldman. Uh, you know, there are some clouds on the horizon. Everything's beginning to slow down. Things like retail sales are slowing down. Uh, travel, restaurants, orders for cars, appliances, all durable goods, etc. have tanked completely. And uh, this combined with the jobs report doesn't bode well for the stock market. Stock market keeps plugging along. I know the Dow has been down for the last three days, but that's that. So... Um, I expect something to happen in August or September. Maybe in September there'll be that little dip. We'll see. But something is a big cloud on the horizon for sure. And please, if you're not following me on Twitter, uh, a quick plug for Twitter, invest underscore answers. We have a survey there for which will be the first to hit 9,000. Uh, will Ethereum hit 9,000 before Cardano hits $9? And this is a conversation that we had on DCA last weekend. So, uh, so far we have over 2,000 votes and uh, jump in. Follow me on Twitter. I share some stuff as well on Twitter that I don't do on YouTube or other places. So check it out. So with that, I'm going to open up to some Q&A and I hope everybody's doing good. Doing good in the hood, as they say. Switch camera. And let me see. There are a ton of questions already. Big thank you as well to the moderators and the channel and everything else. Uh, Voltaire325. I have no Google and want to put 50k in it. What's the entry point? Not investment advice. Google is a beast. Uh, I, was, I was looking at the chart today and I said it's only a matter of time before it hits 3,000. Just, you know, that big cloud, as I just mentioned, talking about, is on the horizon. There should be a dip coming and it would be a shame to buy it at an all time high. I never buy stocks at all time highs unless they are truly transformational. So um, be very careful. But yeah, Google is one of those machines that will just plug along and plug along. It's extremely well run. It has it has business models that haven't even turned on for monetization right now. So um, it's definitely a good investment, but hold tight for now. Jeff Hammerberg, I report a person using your photo and email. Officialinvestances at gmail.com to Google is phishing. Listeners, beware. Thank you so much, Jeff, for pointing that out. There are... Again, there's now 10 fake invest answers on Telegram. Telegram is the, the home of all scammers. Uh, there is fake Facebooks, fake Instagrams, etc. If you guys want to get my true social channels, go to the top bar of YouTube and they're all posted there. Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. That's all I do. I don't do anything else. And don't ever and, and thank you as well, Jeff. I owe you. I should be paying you for that plug, but this official invest answer at gmail.com has been around for a while and um, there's, there's no killing these these cockroaches. But one thing I can say, the simple rule is never give anybody anything. Don't trust anybody. And uh, if you are ever doing something, make sure you meet them face to face. That's it. So MS, progress on the next three gems, researching. Sort of, yes. We have, um, thanks to... Uh, myself and Dr. Watson, we spent a lot of time modeling over the last week. So we've built something beyond our crypto compendium and it's looking at uh, smart contract platforms. And we've identified, well, ratified a couple of theories we had and we're going to use that methodology to identify really good, sustainable cryptos that cover all bases, you know, from tokenomics to regulatory risk to TVLs to growth rates and everything else so wait for that but we're not quite there yet and one of the other concerns is um we're like uh, conservative crypto investors if something is run 500 percent, we're not going to chase and we're not even going to mention it to people so uh, it's just too risky there's so much value of laggards that haven't moved yet out there that there's still a lot of money to be made finola morin you're up very late what do you think of silo I have never heard of Silo. Let me have a quick look and see if um, I can see what Silo Crypto is. 
and if it's outside the top 300 um and it probably is did did hang on a second yes yeah, number 838 we don't go that far and uh, don't don't play with those things but from what i can see on uh, my my system here it is not good i wouldn't touch it with a 40 foot pole be very very careful you know why play in crypto number 1000 when there's so much to be made in the top 10 even top 15 and, and there's so little risk you know just just buy chain link and have a triple on you that should be good enough but playing with these things is just very risky. Drew Sanders, just sold my chain link a couple of days ago, and now I'm looking to put into Sol or ETH on Juicy Dip. Thoughts or any other good ones out there? Again, per my math, um, per the stuff I just showed you, chain link is historically, you know, 800 days old cheap. It's never been this low in relation to Ethereum, because that's the benchmark by which I value chain link, because Ethereum drives chain link value. And it's a bargain right now. So I think maybe... And uh, one of the reasons I'm telling people is don't sell if you have it. I know some people are getting patient. Some things take time to move, but this one's going to move. Um, and I'm actually upping my targets for the year as well. There's a couple of others as well that haven't moved yet. And you'll hear about those shortly too. So um, Sol, as you saw today as well, very weak. Ethereum on fire. But, uh, and I see Ethereum blasting through 4,000. So it's going to be a hard one to catch. You know, at the time to buy Ethereum was at 3000 a few days ago. Um, so, again, Drew, timing is everything in this market. So just make sure you nail your timing and uh, try not to chase stuff. Because it'd be a shame if you moved into Solana and then uh, Chainlink doubles. Because Solana will take a little more time for that to double. Luke Broyles, can you explain the safety of exchange wallets, Coinbase, Gemini wallets versus regular exchanges accounts? versus hot wallets against hacks, SIM swaps, etc. Um, I don't use exchange wallets, so you should take that. The only uh, web-based wallet I use is MetaMask to use certain types of tools. But um, I do leave some crypto on the exchange, but I do not use their wallets. So I haven't dug into the safety of those, but I would much rather trust something like a Trezor wallet itself. Um, and check out that that's just even though they cost more it is definitely safer and uh, there's no danger from things like uh, sim swaps so if you're thinking about keeping your crypto for at least a month off the exchanges go for a hard wallet uh, mark c um, have you looked at one inch yes it failed the crypto compendium test so <laughs> uh, it didn't warrant any further investigation but uh, i did look at it and it's an interesting project, but some of the other stuff around it just doesn't make sense at all. Uh, MRB70, I hope I got that right. How do I take profit as a whole coiner? I have one coin entered at 34K. I'd love to stay a whole coiner, but I need money back for the house deposit. Um, the best thing, if you need money back for a house deposit, I'd use a platform like, well, it looks like by the symbol of your currency, you're in the UK. And I don't think Celsius is in the UK, so... Um, but Nexo maybe, and Nexo you can borrow against your Bitcoin, and that's what I would do if you need money. It would be such a shame to sell your Bitcoin now at such a time because you know it could go to a hundred thousand. Some people saying could go to two hundred thousand or more, and that would make it for a very expensive house deposit. So check out Nexo where you are locally, see if you can deposit your Bitcoin and then borrow against it for that deposit. Neon Visual, Bitcoin dominance is dropping fast, heading for 27 ATL. Yeah, uh, I'm watching that very carefully. So this time around, uh, Neon Visual, there's a lot of change in the market. One is things like DeFi and a lot of the old coin protocols are much more secure. And therefore, they attract a lot more dollars. And we're seeing that with the growth in things like Solana and um, other protocols. But I do believe... Uh, Bitcoin will always be the 800 pound gorilla. I think if it goes to 35% dominance, then we need to be maybe a little bit concerned, but I don't see that happening. I see Bitcoin going above 50K pretty soon. Although I've been saying that now for like a week or 10 days, but we just keep knocking on that door and it showed very impressive strength today. But uh, that pair that I look at of ETH to Bitcoin, it's at kind of a low now. So hang tough. Uh, don't worry, Bitcoin's going to come back. Like everything else, nothing happens in unison anymore. Everything is uncorrelated. So the guy, assuming the bull run continues, 
and the next bear market hits, what kind of low do you think ETH would go to? So basically, it wouldn't surprise me because ETH is so volatile. If ETH goes to, say, $10,000, uh, a 66% retracement would not surprise me at all. It would go back to 3500 Whereas if Bitcoin goes to $100,000, it would be like a 50% retracement back, back to $50,000. If it goes to $200,000, it would go back to $100,000. That's kind of my thinking so far, but uh, we'll see. Now, if Ethereum does what I think it could do, and if it gets more institutional adoption, and once the inflation goes negative there may be no bear market at all for Ethereum. There will be for some of the old, other altcoins, but things like Solana and Ethereum with really big use cases, and once the adoption of DeFi happens at a much more accelerated pace, there could be no bear market for Ethereum. So that's my theory. Uh, and everything I see points to a lot of that happening. So Kellen Schmaltz, where do you see HUD-8 going by January? I have call options. $10 break even 655. So you're doing very well. Um yeah, it'll go definitely above uh, $10. It'll be very much tied to um the Bitcoin price. They will have over 5,000 bitcoins on the balance sheet by the end of the year. And that'll be a huge chunk of their market capital. I've actually built an arbitration model for HUD8. Um but it's I don't want to say where it is, <laughs> but I will I will showcase that we do have an upcoming video with all the top Bitcoin proxies and their valuations and where they could potentially go. So stay tuned for that as well. Cryptolicious, Raul Paul says he might sell 25% at 25% allocation of Bitcoin for ETH. Thoughts? He doesn't know. He's been thinking about doing that for two months. And I think I think he knows better. Um he's just I, I love him dearly, very smart guy, great macro guy. But from his interview yesterday, it showed me he didn't go really deep into some of the tokens. He talks about knowing Ethereum and loosely about Solana and Cardano and XRP, but without a lot of depth as I'd like. So from that perspective, I don't think he'll do it. But he's also in a place where he can swap things out because he lives in a tax-free place. So he could sell Bitcoin tomorrow and buy it the day after. You know, he can just day trade his crypto and not have ramifications. Whereas for others like us, at least for myself, it's not as easy to swap stuff around because of tax ramifications, especially with very low cost bases. So I don't think he'll do that. Um, you know, we'll see. But if he does, I think it could be a mistake. Uh, but then again, Ethereum will run faster, but it'll dip faster too. And he, he's very well aware of that. So we'll see. Um, Craig Mossman, thinking about ETH today, what is the primary cause of its run? A change in technicals, change in value, or is it just momentum-based? It's momentum-based. I think sometimes funds make certain steps. I do believe a lot of it's probably institutional. They take certain steps beginning of the first of the month where they say, okay, we have released funds to go into this type of fund. Maybe Grayscale is buying a whole bunch of Ethereum on behalf of clients. I'm not sure. We'll find out in a day or two. But uh, it's definitely heavy, heavy, heavy buying. So if you look at the move of Ethereum today, it's 300, up 354, 10.5% uh, market cap of uh, crypto this heavy. Let's just try to calculate that exactly. How much it's gone up today so this is 50 billion dollars so for ethereum to move 50 billion dollars it needs at least five to eight billion to flow into it today <laughs> that's a lot of buying so uh, i think it's also a factor it may not be that much money flow but it's also a factor of the decreasing amount of crypto on exchanges which is affecting price. When there's less on the shelves to sell, price goes parabolic. There's far too many buyers chasing far too few, few sellers. So I think that's probably it. So uh, Kevin Brown in teaching us how much retracement you predict when the ETH staking is released next March. Yeah, that could be a big blip, but again, it depends. It depends on exactly how much supply and how much the institutional demand is still there. I think everybody's thinking end of March, you know, when the unlocking happens. But sometimes people roll into more, more staking for another extended period of time, especially if they're making so much money 
uh, and if the cost basis is so low, they just can roll it through. So we don't know what's going to happen until we're closer to the time, but I do think we have a good run up until March anyway. So we'll <laughs> check in on me about three months from now, four months, and I'll have a much better idea of where we're going because it'll be a function of how high we've gone and then be able to calculate retracement and money flows and stuff like that. El Cid, do you agree with Plan B's price prediction for Bitcoin end of September and 43? No, so El Cid, Plan B, people get confused by this. Plan B said 43 is his floor for options. His exact words now for options. I don't know if he's an options trader. I think he is because I, th I know his kind of background a little bit. So I think he may buy some positions to protect himself. Um, so that means, you know, floor, floor. The way I see things going right now with Bitcoin, you know, we had a 21% August and we're up 3.5%. $1,650 has gone up another 150 bucks since I've been here talking to you guys. Um, I think, you know, with adoption, El Salvador, uh, more institutions, I expect some institutions to announce that they've put Bitcoin on their balance sheet in September. I think that'll just trigger a lot of activity. And then you have got the wild cards like Apple and Walmart that could be doing some stuff. And if Twitter starts beta testing, they're tipping with Bitcoin with Strike, that would just blow up adoption altogether. So we'll see. Again, 43K from Plan B isn't total floor, which basically was only 3,000 away from where we were this morning. So this thing moves fast. Uh, thank you for your donation as well. Learn to surf waves just for the animals. Air to the run. MicroStrategy solved. Tesla have paid off all my credit card debt. <laughs> Wonderful. Isn't that a great thing? Great feeling. Uh, and thank you for being part of the community as well. Keenan Matthews, don't forget to take care of yourself and enjoy some days off. Uh, yeah. Uh, I can't. It's, it's too much to do here. That back needs a spa day. Yeah. Blue Gobbler, Dungeness, Rick, and Broke Bank Vegan for the animals. You guys are all so kind. Ivan Yang, I was thinking about swapping my link for Quant. Thoughts? Don't. I looked at Quant. Um, it's good. It might have potential, but it's riskier than Link. So it depends on, on your risk appetite, but that's not something I would do. And I've had a hard look at Quant a few times. Darnell Parker, please review the tokenomics from Near Protocol and Oasis Network. I did. I looked at both and... Uh, let me see Didn't, if I can pull this up. Your protocol. This is so funny. Um, <laughs> I just watched switch computer again. There we are. Uh, let's have a quick look at near protocol. Bear with me one second. Near is okay. It's middle of the road. It's not good or bad. And the Oasis. I know that's Ox. Everybody's talking about that one. That's on the list for me to dig into. Um, and haven't done that yet. I think the symbols rose. So we will definitely do that. I'm going to put in my little signature asterisk mark beside that. And uh, we will have a look. So thank you for that question. And Steve Pat, how do you how do you see the SEC regulations affecting the ability to buy and sell in exchanges? Should we just keep everything in wallets? Uh, well, if you have a sizable amount, yes, definitely keep them in wallets. Don't trust the exchanges, especially shady exchanges that could throttle your ability to withdraw. So be very very careful there. Um, but yeah, if you have a sizable amount of Bitcoin, there's a, you know you got people like. Gensler, he knows Bitcoin, but he's going to go after the shadier outfits first, and they'll take years to get to. So, like, I'm in things like, but I made an assessment of regulatory risk for a whole bunch of cryptos for a reason, and that's a huge part of why we have the crypto compendium right now. And I, he'll go after highly centralized. Um, ICO things that line the pockets of insiders, people that have huge inflation and a whole bunch of other factors. If they don't have those factors, which are the things that I invest in, you're going to be fine. But And if you're in things like Bitcoin, you're going to be fine. Ethereum, probably going to be fine. Uh, after that, it'll take them a long time to get to those uh, coins. 
but he'll go after the big scam, obvious scam places first. Blue Gobbler Dungeness. I just made enough from old coins to convert to one Bitcoin. Should I do it or diversify amongst the cryptocurrencies? I think it depends on what you're in. Blue Gobbler, great job. Uh, if you were in high risk cryptos, like things outside the top 20, definitely the top 50, think about going into Bitcoin for safety. Um, if you are in some of the good top 20 names that I like, like Chainlink, Solana, Aave, Uniswap, Polkadot, etc., uh, I'd hold tight. Hamada, uh, with alts running, do you have updated price target for Sol, AVAX, etc.? Yeah, AVAX uh, updated price target this round is about 59 bucks. Solana, 250 to 450, depending on how high Ethereum and the rest of the market goes. But I think Avalanche, until they start burning more, they are burning, but they're not burning enough for me to justify more than a $60 target. Um, but that's what I see for Avalanche. And uh, there are some other things as well that make me come to that target. So I hope that helps. And what indicators that rings exit time for you? Yeah, when they hit my targets and when I find something else to jump on, then I just switch things around. So um, we'll see. Uh, like things like Algorand, <laughs> that may be taken out to the back garden soon. Phil Nader, uh, please let me know your thoughts on ADAX, Solnax, Sold. Do you think they are legit or should I exit SAP? Um, I don't... Let me see. I don't know. I've never even heard of ADAX. It's not on my cryptic venue, so it's not top 300. Uh, Solanax. I think anything that has a name similar to something, it's definitely scammy. So I don't have them in my top 300 list. We haven't analyzed them. We haven't touched them. Uh, let me have a quick look at sold just for a second. Let's see what I can find. Oh my god, they even copied the freaking logo. Yeah, that's that smells and self-reported circulating supply. Red flag, red flag, red flag. Shoot it, Phil Nader. Get out fast before you're left uh, holding the bag, as they say. <laughs> don't, don't go with imitations of the originals. Always stick with the pure form. It's real simple. Simple rule of life. Pete Bishop. Um... I currently have a portfolio link, Sol, ETH. Do you think this is balanced or would you move some into Bitcoin? Everybody needs some Bitcoin if you don't have Bitcoin. That's the number one rule of life. Bitcoin is the most pristine, hardest money on earth. So any extra cash lying around, I just pump it into Bitcoin just for safety. Um, you're heavy on ETH. You're light on Sol. So I'd like to get, if I were you, make your sol bag at least a third of your eth bag which means taking it up to at least 10k and link hold for now um good choice link is going to pop soon mark my words chad g it's already popping it's up 10 percent today chad g i uh, love your retire on bitcoin eth by 2030 series i'm terrified of monetary debasement and purchasing power in 2030 you should be uh, assuming 750 is at real inflation over 10 years how does that change your models so I actually factor inflation in at an average of 6% over the 10 years. Um, and I share those within Patreon for people to change whatever they want. But I have an upcoming video coming with staking involved. And it doesn't go out to 2030, it just goes out five years. So stay tuned for that. And I will put in more uh, realistic inflation rates as well in the model too. And we'll see. But uh, you're, you're very right, Chad, to be concerned about those things because they are a big problem. Like even yesterday, I mentioned that Social Security in the United States is running out of money in 11 years. And somebody said in the comments on YouTube, no, it's not. No, it's not. I said, yes, it is. And they haven't even taken into account that uh, debasement as well. So the benefits are going to be gone. It's, it's a classic uh, a pomp. Um, I had a video today. He called it a classic a Ponzi scheme. It's where you take money in from the youth to pay the older people. There's no money in the kitty. It's it's a complete scam, and uh, people should be up in arms. But it's the law. You just got they just take take the money, and it is a Ponzi scheme. It's going to be gone. So uh, new upcoming models models Chad coming on that one. Hopefully very soon. 
Carl M, if you had entered Zill at 0 0.002, would you consider exiting? Uh, yes, I would. I have a small Zill bag, 500 bucks worth that I got because I want to experiment with a couple of things. But uh, definitely, um, Zill is is a good a good protocol to have. But if you have it at that basis, at least take half off the table and uh, put in something safer. Not that Zill is not safe, but it's not one of my big positions at all. Are you still a fan of Chili's from the underdog? I still have Chili's, but I bought it as a speculative investment at 25 cents. And I plan to sell it at 70, 80, 90 cents once it pops and just get out. It is not a keeper. It's just play money. Sometimes I speculate, but it would only be for, again, a small portion. And Jayong Cho, uh, can you check IOTA and ICX for me to see if you have approved it? I have checked IOTA and uh, I think it was no bueno. Let me see. IOTA. E yes, it's actually not that bad. It's kind of, if you imagine 100% is excellent, it scored 58%. And ICX, but I when I looked into uh, IOTA, I wasn't interested in buying it. And ICX is worse. It's about 50%, 45%. So uh, IOTA is better than ICX. Um, but neither of them would qualify as an investment from my perspective. Um, again, very conservative. I like asymmetric bets. I don't like to risk money. Nesquik's back. If you had 65% Bitcoin, 15% Ethereum, 15% Polkadot, and $1,000 to invest, would you put it all into Solana? Probably I would have bought it yesterday a dollar or hundred and two dollars. Uh, yesterday would have been a good price. You could have gotten me ten sol. Um, yeah, I I think your your Ethereum position is a little too light. Polka dot too heavy. You need to lighten your polka dot load as well a little bit. Not financial advice, but I wouldn't hold fifteen percent polka dot. I like it, but I have to see. I have to see it growing faster. And I'm not seeing that growth right now. Alex Rogan, I'm a big Jack Bogle index investor. What are your thoughts on crypto indexes like CCI 30 or Crix? It's definitely not my crypto approach, but interested. Yeah, I looked at all the indexes and I don't like some of their holdings. Some of them I was like, are you kidding me? Why do you have that in your bag? Um, so I would never do that. And I'm not somebody who likes ETFs or mutual funds. I much prefer pulling out the best assets and doing it myself. And then also remember, not only do they have a bag that's a bunch of junk, but in this market, things go and come in cycles. So you've got to get your timing right. Uh, I always call it dancing shoes because one month something is hot, like a sector or whatever, and next month something else is hot. So you need to be in a position to move around. You can't do that with a fund. They're just stuck. They're holding everything all the time and they don't swap it around so alex i wouldn't do that at all and it's pretty easy to <laughs> see what the winners are uh and there will only be very few winners in this market too paul atreides uh kind of six-finger portfolio 60 to 80x by 2030 or is it hopium or would you imagine 13 to 1500 a month for crypto investing um i think if you do it right um so, for example, I threw 50K into crypto on June 22nd as a, an example portfolio so people could see how I manage and add and stuff like that. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that 50K will be well over a million dollars uh, by 2030. So the question is 60 to 80X. I think 20X is better, more conservative. But again, dancing shoes, you got to time things carefully. And... Uh, how would you manage 13 to 1500 a month? I'd be, if you have that amount, that's a good amount, especially if you've got a 10 year time frame. Just be very careful how you um, time and position and, and position size your investments. And sometimes you got to wait. You know, I say be the sniper in the woods to wait for things to fall into your trap and then jump in and get them. So I think conservatively, if you do a good job, Paul, you should easily be able to 20x your money. So six figures, 20x, so you got 100 grand. That's $2 million by 2030, conservatively. Could be a lot more if things go the way I think they will. Mike Mancuso, uh, 
Political labels aside, thoughts on Trump referring to crypto as a scam and a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah, um, I don't talk politics, uh, but I can talk finances. He inherited $800 million over 30 years ago, lost it all. So uh, I wouldn't trust him <laughs> for financial advice. Um, that uh, that's, would be my advice. Also, you will see a lot of animosity from people that have no bags, that don't own any. And he hates to see people like Jeff Bezos become the richest man in the world or people like that. So he just it makes him mad and he just wants everybody to be poor and him to be the richest man in the world. So he doesn't believe in opportunity for everybody, but I do. So we're a little bit different there. But yeah, he's been barking that same song for years. He hates crypto. He tried to have his guy, I can't remember his name, Mnuchin, ban Bitcoin <laughs> and crypto, and he wouldn't. So yeah, don't worry about that, Mike. Andy, Mr. Patreon, any more on Akash? Um, let me see. I, this gets so many of these. I know. I'm sorry about this. A cash network, yes. So we, we do have it analyzed. It scored really badly. It scored a 42% out of 100. And it has a lot of problems, including things like inflation of 43%. Andy, don't touch a cash. That's danger, 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 danger. And thank you for your donation as well, L. Clark. I and my Roth IRA appreciate you. Good job. Chad G, hope you feel better and avoid the treat job and juice. Yeah, I'm not. I don't do to gardening anymore. And uh, Gabriel Rojas. Thank you, Silky Eddie, for the animals. Long time daily listener. Good stuff. Chet Czar. I've done a bunch of artwork for Tool and worked in their music videos. Old pals from way back. That is incredible, Chet. I'm honored. I'd love to see your work. That's amazing. Their artwork is second to none. Kim TMC. Thank you for being supportive of us women. Yeah, we need more. Bring your ladies in. It's just for them to miss out on this train. It's very, very upsetting. So... <clears throat> Global Party People, Bruce Lawrence and Victor A. Benemelis. Thank you so much, everybody. And that could be it. I don't know if there's any more questions. I don't know when I get notification that, that, that that's it, but I haven't heard. But let me just check on the market and see what's going on. Ooh, Bitcoin has taken a... Oh, we just switched out. So it's a new day because it must be after five o'clock my time. And... Everything is dipping. But is anything green in the new day? Uh, not really. So everything is, is there. So And Titus Blusk. I don't know if that means Titus Blue in Singapore or whatever. Hopefully one day I'll figure out how to say that correctly. And I think that could be it, everybody. Big thank you all for being here and be safe. Um, it's a new day. New crypto market. We'll see what happens tomorrow. It'll be a fun night, I think, tonight. Bye.